community property states. So we've seen before that we could have some unusual kind of situations or different situations depending on the state law, whether the state is community property or not. This could come into play, for example, if you have a married filing separate situation. So if you're looking up rules for married filing separate, remember the filing statuses here. We've got single or non-married statuses, which could be single, head of household, or possibly qualified widow, widower, or or uh, they changed the name to, uh, but anyways, a qualified widow, widower, or if you're married, you've got married filing joint, married filing separate. When applying the rules for married filing separate, which is a more unusual kind of situation, you might have to take into consideration, you should take into consideration whether you're in a community property state or not, because that could change the, uh, the way you're going to be allocating. So community property states include Arizona, California, Idaho, Louisiana, Nevada, New Mexico, uh, Texas, Washington, and Wisconsin. So if you and your spouse lived in a community property state, you must usually follow state law to determine what is uh, community income and what is separate income. So for details there, you can see form 8958 and publication 555. Nevada, Washington, and California domestic partners. So a registered domestic partner in Nevada, Washington, or California must generally report half the combined community income of the individual and their domestic partner. So you can see uh, form 8958 and publication 555 for more information. That there, rounding off the whole dollars. So you can round off cents to whole dollars on your return and schedule. So you note when we actually do the calculations in the tax forms, usually we're not adding the pennies, we're doing some rounding to the whole dollars. If you do round to the whole dollars, you must round all amounts. So obviously we're gonna be consistent with rounding uh, to whole dollars because these are kind of estimates in terms of taxes being an estimate in general and uh, the, the cents being typically immaterial with regards to the whole calculation that will typically be a good rule to go by. Uh, to round drop amounts under 50 cents and increase amounts from 50 to 99 cents to the next dollar. For example, a $1.39 becomes $1, $2.50 becomes $3. If you have to add two or more amounts to figure the amount to enter on a line, include cents when adding the amounts and round off only the total. Again, that's probably a fairly small, if you, so for example, if you started adding up uh, the dollars without the pennies versus adding the pennies and then rounding after you come to the total it's probably going to be a fairly insignificant dollar amount dollars? dollars like money of rounding differences but you know you're gonna you can typically you'll round after you add them up with the pennies so if you are entering amounts that include cents make sure to include the, the decimal point there's no cents column on the form so in future presentations, we'll get into a little bit more of the of the general categories and reporting the general categories, W-2 income, and then we'll we'll take a look at the interest income, the dividend income, capital gains income, and uh, and most of those are are often have their own schedules. So that's why we kind of talk about them when we get to their own schedules that will feed into basically the uh, the income line.